History, they say, is written by the conqueror, and this has been the human story. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm ambivalent about it. Um, anytime that I've experienced something like this in the past, any sort of degree of... Uh... As a species, we pride ourselves in our history, as we read of how Homo sapiens drove out wild beasts, some into extinction, just so we can build this magnificent civilization we call ours today. But what if that isn't true? In a recent paper, two scientists have questioned this assumption and shown that humans were probably not Earth's first and only advanced civilization. Are all our childhood legends true? What did the scientists discover? And what does this discovery mean for us? Join us in this video as we reveal how scientists discovered an advanced civilization that existed before humans. Well, it is true that uh, some people are uh, disappointed that uh, the Earth has such a comparatively... You probably heard it growing up. Stories of superhumans and ancient cities, the monuments and civilizations that they built, and the tales of their accomplishments. These legends and myths, sourced from diverse cultures all around the world, have shaped the cultural heritage, beliefs, and storytelling traditions of societies. From Arthurian legends like the tales of King Arthur and Camelot, to Greek mythology with its rich collection of stories featuring gods and goddesses like Zeus, Hera, and Athena, and mythical creatures such as the Minotaur and Medusa, we have all been enthralled. Then, there is Norse mythology with stories of gods like Odin, Thor, and Loki, and epic sagas of heroes and legendary creatures from Norse folklore, such as the Viking myths of Ragnarok, the end of the world. All of these have been captured in some shapes and forms in movies like the Avengers series from Marvel and some other forms of entertainment, helping to communicate a kind of value system in societies around the world. One of these is the legend of Atlantis. The legend of Atlantis has captivated imaginations for centuries, leading to numerous interpretations, theories, and quests to uncover its existence. The legend of Atlantis originated from the ancient Greek philosopher Plato. According to Plato's dialogues, Timaeus and Critias, Atlantis was a powerful and advanced island civilization situated beyond the Pillars of Hercules, thought to be the Strait of Gibraltar in the Atlantic Ocean. The civilization was said to have existed around 9,000 years before Plato's time, making it an ancient and highly developed society. Atlantis was described as a prosperous and technologically advanced civilization with a sophisticated government, magnificent architecture, and a society thriving in arts, sciences, and military prowess. However, due to their growing moral corruption and ambition, the Atlanteans eventually became a threat to other civilizations. The story goes that the gods punished Atlantis by causing the island to sink into the sea in a single day and night, leading to its complete disappearance beneath the waves. While Atlantis remains a legendary tale, many theories and hypotheses exist about its potential existence, inspiring countless explorations and searches throughout history. However, no concrete evidence conclusively supports its existence, leaving Atlantis as a captivating and mysterious legend shrouded in myth and speculation. For some people, Plato's accounts of Atlantis, while highly detailed, are seen as allegorical tales rather than factual records. Some scholars suggest that Atlantis could be a metaphorical story meant to convey philosophical or political ideas rather than a description of an actual civilization. Others hypothesize that Atlantis might have been inspired by ancient memories or myths of real catastrophic events, such as volcanic eruptions or tsunamis that submerged land masses in antiquity. Also, various theories regarding the location of Atlantis have emerged, proposing locations ranging from the Mediterranean to the Caribbean, with some even suggesting Antarctica or submerged areas in the Atlantic Ocean. Some researchers point to potential connections between Plato's descriptions and ancient civilizations like the Minoans on Crete or the lost city of Tartessos in Spain. Despite extensive efforts by explorers, archaeologists, and researchers to find tangible evidence of Atlantis, 
no conclusive proof has been discovered. But what if it is a true story and not some fiction as we were made to believe? What if there was a highly developed and advanced race of humans that built a civilization that preceded ours? In a talk about ancient civilizations, Christopher Charles Doyle spoke about the incredible sculpture of the Sphinx in Egypt, which most scientists believe to have been constructed around 2500 BC. However, a scientist named Robert Schoch has questioned this assumption of the date of the Sphinx's creation, as there was no evidence to prove that it was constructed in or around the year 2500 BC. Schoch conducted some tests and found that the erosion on certain parts of the Sphinx was caused by water. This is mind-blowing and shocking, as the last known instance of rainfall in that area was around 6000 BC, which means that the Sphinx would have had to be built far before then. But if humans were living in caves and using crude tools at that time, who built the Sphinx? There is a theory that there once existed a highly advanced civilization of humans which was wiped out after a comet hit the Earth around 12,000 years ago. The comet caused glacial ice caps to melt, resulting in floods of biblical proportions, volcanic eruptions, and other natural catastrophes. This theory also explains the mass extinction of several animals known to inhabit North America during the Ice Age all of which disappeared mysteriously at the same time. To build upon this, a team of archaeologists in Denisova, Russia, later discovered a giant tooth, approximately twice the size of the human tooth, dated around 30 to 40,000 years ago. The tooth was sent for testing, after which a shocking discovery came to light. The tooth contained human DNA. Moreover, the Denisovans, as they came to be called, possessed an entirely different kind of human DNA, one that is still unclassified. Archaeologists also found the remains of a bracelet from this period, which revealed a second shocking discovery. The bracelet had a tiny, precise hole, one millimeter in diameter, which could only have been made by a high-powered drill. As if this wasn't enough, a third unbelievable shock followed. All humans from Eastern and Southeastern Asia possess about 2.4% Denisovan DNA. The question this poses is immense. Does this mean there was an earlier advanced human race and civilization? Is this evidence that a highly advanced civilization of human giants once lived on Earth and a part of them remains alive in our DNA? As incredible as this is to imagine, Unfortunately, not enough hard evidence exists to prove it definitively. While it is true that there were other humans before us, whether they were a super-civilization remains unproven. There are even those who firmly stand against this theory. One such is Michael Shermer, whose article in Scientific American is a scathing critique of any such theories. In his article, he addresses two points in particular. According to Shermer, a comet that supposedly wiped out every tool, potsherd, article of clothing, writing, metallurgy, and other technologies, not to mention trash, is simply inconceivable. How could every trace of such an advanced civilization be wiped out when evidence of other animals from that period survived? His second point is the megafaunal extinction. Shermer argues that during this period, 37 mammal genera went extinct in North America, while several others survived and thrived. If the comet was that deadly, how did the other animals survive? Moreover, 52 mammal genera also went extinct around that time in South America, which was not hit by said comet. However, these extinctions did coincide with the arrival of Homo sapiens in these regions, which points to the more widely accepted theory of overhunting being the reason behind these mass extinctions. Shermer ends his article by highlighting the ignorance behind the super-civilization theory. He states that just because we cannot explain the existence of certain structures on Earth does not immediately validate the theory that these mysteries can be credited to an advanced civilization that existed before us. However, in a documented conversation and subsequent paper released, between astrophysicist Adam Frank and the then-director of NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies, Gavin Schmidt, 
we are reminded that the further back in time we travel, the less evidence we will find. They argued that if there was an ancient advanced civilization millions of years ago, hardly any evidence would remain, especially if the said civilization lasted less than 100 years, which is still 500 times longer than our current civilization's lifespan. If that civilization existed sustainably, that would mean it created less impact on the Earth, informing why there is even less evidence to prove its existence. In this paper, they have a name for the idea that an industrial civilization may have predated humanity, the Silurian Hypothesis. In their work, they study the signature that our civilization is likely to leave behind and ask whether it will be detectable millions of years from now. They conclude that our probable impact on the planet will be palpable, but in some ways hard to distinguish from various other events in the geological record. Schmidt and Frank begin by setting out just how little we know about ancient Earth. The oldest part of Earth's surface is the Negev Desert in southern Israel, which is 1.8 million years old. Older surfaces exist only in exposed areas or as a result of mining and drilling operations. Given these constraints, the evidence of activity by Homo sapiens stretches back some 2.5 million years, which is not that far in geological terms. The ocean floor is relatively young too, because the ocean crust is constantly recycled. As a result, all ocean sediment post dates the Jurassic period and is, therefore, less than 170 million years old. In any case, according to Schmidt and Frank, the fraction of life that gets fossilized is tiny. Dinosaurs roamed Earth for some 180 million years, and yet only a few thousand near-complete specimens exist. In comparison, modern humans have existed for just a few tens of thousands of years. According to them, species as short-lived as Homo sapiens so far might not be represented in the existing fossil record at all. What of human artifacts like roads, buildings, baked bean tins, and silicon chips? These too are unlikely to survive long or to be found even if they do. The current area of urbanization is less than 1% of the Earth's surface, point out the researchers. We conclude that for potential civilizations older than about 4 million years, the chances of finding direct evidence of their existence via objects or fossilized examples of their population is small, they say. But there is another type of evidence. Our civilization also leaves a chemical footprint. Schmidt and Frank were interested in industrial societies, which they define as those capable of extracting energy from the environment. By this definition, humanity has been industrial for about 300 years. According to Schmidt and Frank, since the mid-18th century, humans have released over half a trillion tons of fossil carbon via the burning of coal, oil, and natural gas. That has had a significant impact on the planet. Since all this carbon was originally biological, it contains less carbon-13 than the much larger pool of inorganic carbon. Releasing it, therefore, changes the ratio of C13 and C12, a signature that should be visible in the geological record. The temperature increase caused by this carbon release is about one degree Celsius. This too should have an observable signature, the way it changes the isotopic ratio of oxygen 18 in carbonates. Also, agriculture and nitrogen cycling in fertilizers are changing the isotopic signature of nitrogen. Agriculture and deforestation both increase soil erosion, as does increased rainfall due to global warming. So ocean sediment should be changing too, thanks to eroded soil washing into the sea. On top of all this, the use of metals such as lead, chromium, rhenium, platinum and gold has increased thanks to mining activities and these will presumably be flushed into the ocean at greater rates than before industrialization. Humans are also changing the fossil record. There has been a widespread increase in small animals such as mice and rats. That ought to be noticeable, as will the increased extinction rate of other species. 
Large mammal extinctions that occurred at the end of the last ice age will also associate with the onset of the Anthropocene, says Schmidt and Frank. Then there are the chemicals we make. Humanity has released large volumes of synthetic chlorinated compounds into the environment, along with huge volumes of plastics. Just how long these chemicals or their daughter products will be detectable isn't clear. There is even the possibility of a nuclear signature, perhaps from a civilization ending war. Curiously, the effects of such a war may not last long in geological terms. The half-lives of most of these elements are just too short to be relevant on this time scale. Two possible exceptions are plutonium-244, with a half-life of 80.8 .8 million years, and curium-247, with a half-life of 15 million years. These would be detectable for a large fraction of the relevant period if they were deposited in sufficient quantities, say, as a result of a nuclear weapon exchange, say the researchers. Schmidt and Franks conclude that humanity's existence should be visible in the geological record. The Anthropocene layer in ocean sediment will be abrupt and multivariate, consisting of seemingly concurrent specific peaks in multiple geochemical proxies, biomarkers, elemental composition, and mineralogy, they say. However, this signature may not be unique. The researchers have identified several events in the geological record that look similar to the impact humans are having. For example, a sudden global change occurred in carbon and oxygen isotope levels some 56 million years ago in an event known as the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum. This coincided with a large increase in carbon levels and a temperature rise of between 5 and 7 degrees Celsius over 200,000 years or so, which is a mere sneeze in geological terms. Nobody knows what caused this event, but one idea is that at this time, igneous rock in the North Atlantic expanded into organic sediment, heating it and releasing carbon. This North Atlantic igneous province later became Iceland and related land masses. That's not the only unexplained change in the geological signature. Numerous other changes in temperature, carbon deposits, ocean salinity and so on are awaiting explanation. There are undoubted similarities between previous abrupt events in the geological record and the likely Anthropocene signature in the geological record to come, say Schmidt and Frank. Of course, none of these events indicate the presence of an earlier industrial civilization. In the words of Schmidt and Frank, who are keen to head off unconstrained speculation, the Silurian hypothesis cannot be regarded as likely merely because no other valid idea presents itself. However, their work has raised some intriguing questions and pointed to the value of further research on how long synthetic compounds will survive in the environment. It explores an unusual idea that has the potential to change the way we think about humanity and places our impact in a broader perspective. It also provides a background for astrobiologists studying other planets. For example, Mars was once much wetter and warmer. If it ever hosted an industrial society, this paper maps out some of the signatures that might show up in the geological record there. Venus, too, was once more hospitable. Then there are the oceans of Europa and, ultimately, planets around other stars. The argument put forth, therefore, is this. 1. If future civilizations will find it almost impossible to prove that our current civilization existed, then we cannot go around assuming there wasn't any previous highly developed civilization. This means no one should count on finding an iPhone from the Jurassic period, as it wouldn't last millions of years, gorilla glass or not. Which is why Frank has joked about looking on the moon for such evidence. The moon is also a favored target of Penn State University astronomer Jason Wright, one of a handful of other researchers now applying serious scientific thinking to the possibility of pre-human technological civilizations. According to him, habitable planets like Earth are pretty good at destroying unmaintained things on their surfaces. As such, he's been looking at the exotic possibility that such a civilization might have been a spacefaring one. If so, 
artifacts of their technology or techno-signatures might be found elsewhere in the solar system. However, he's not saying we might dig up aliens' fossilized bones. Instead, he's talking about techno-signatures. The term encompasses a range of possible artifacts, including archaeological ruins, old mining operations, and synthetic chemicals or nuclear isotopes that could have been created only by technological processes. Wright argues that if a prior indigenous technological species did exist in our solar system, it might have arisen on Earth or a pre-greenhouse Venus or Mars when it still had flowing water. So he explores the possibility of a spacefaring Silurian civilization whose artifacts might survive elsewhere in the solar system. Asteroids, Mars's buried secrets, and even the lunar surface all become potential repositories for these techno-signatures. However, any artifacts left on Venus would probably have been destroyed long ago by the planet's harsh atmosphere or the violent resurfacing the planet underwent hundreds of millions of years ago. If any techno-signatures were left on Mars, however, Wright believes they might still exist. But given the red planet's thick dust, he writes that it is unlikely that artifacts might be obvious from space imagery or even from the sort of shallow probing performed by the various Martian rovers. In other words, just because the orbiters and rovers we've sent to Mars haven't turned up any techno-signatures doesn't mean they're not there. They might simply be lying deep under the surface. This is why Wright has suggested that we look for techno-signatures on our moon and the rocky moons and asteroids of the outer solar system. The second argument is this. If the conditions on Earth today, with global warming and climate change, are trackable incidents that occurred some millions of years ago, is it too far-fetched to assume that the cause would be the same? Humans? According to Schmidt and Frank, there is enough evidence to suggest that there might be something that lends credence to the existence of an ancient human civilization, one that is exceptionally advanced. While we don't have conclusive evidence right now, the hope is that research will go into this. And maybe someday, not too far away, we might discover that all our childhood fairy tales and legends about superhumans, fairies, and elves might be true. Wouldn't that be amazing? Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.